In this video, I am going to cover three different books that I read in the last month that deal specifically with manipulation, psychology, and warping outcomes. I've always been fascinated watching companies weaponize different marketing and sales tactics in an effort to manipulate consumers, much like the politicians in our country are doing right now, as well as the media companies. I believe equipping yourself with this information will make it easier for you to spot if you're being manipulated and to stop it happening in your life. One of the major problems today is that we've grown so complacent with this manipulation that most people don't question it. So that's exactly why I set out to read these three books specifically. I definitely feel right now there's a collective desire to wake up from all of this. So again, I'm going to share with you three books that completely change how I view manipulation, psychology, and everything to do with it. Real quick, I wrote a book. It's called Freelance Your Way to Freedom. It's designed to wake you up from your corporate stupor. And I'm going to link to it below for you guys to check out. It would mean the world to me. Sorry, book. So first up, we have Obedience to Authority by Stanley Milgram. This is a book that is based on studies that were conducted in the 60s and 70s out of Yale University and New Haven, Connecticut. What the scientists set out to do with this book essentially is to study the extent to which people will obey authority before they break out of the trance and say no to it. One of their biggest inspirations was of course the Holocaust and how so many people were able to be talked into going along with the Nazi regime and doing what they did in exterminating people. So this book is controversial for a number of reasons, mainly being a lot of people didn't agree with these experiments that went on. And how they worked is there would be these people they tested who had no idea that everybody else in the experiment was an actor. So they would be brought into the lab or different settings and basically have a person of authority read a question to the person in the electric chair. And every time they got it wrong, they would increase the amount of voltages that were hitting the person. But what the blindsided person didn't realize is that that person in the chair was an actor, they weren't actually being shocked. So every time they turned the amount of electricity up, the person would scream louder, but they were really just acting. The scientists naturally thought that most people would not go through with the full amount of voltages when they were sitting in that situation that they would at some point say to the person administering the test, hey, stop it, you're hurting them. And when they did first say, hey, stop it, you're hurting them, for three times that person doing the electricity would say, they're fine, they're fine, it's okay, they're gonna be okay, it's not gonna hurt them. Naturally, Milgram and all of them thought that at some point people would stand up and go, I can't do this. <laughs> not the case. Uh, and many times it was about 36 out of 40 people went through with the full amount of electrocution as opposed to standing up and actually do something about it. I don't have a problem with this. I think sometimes to uncover the truth about situations, you have to get uncomfortable. So yes, this book made me feel a little uncomfortable, but I really found it more interesting. The psychological takeaways from it, like the fact that people are okay with torturing somebody else if it means they don't have to be awkward, they don't have to stand up to authority, they don't have to put themselves in an unpredictable place of discomfort. They'd rather sit by and just let it happen to the other person so they don't have to feel uncomfortable. That part is disturbing to me, human nature in general. So this book to me is an incredible, incredible read if you are somebody who wants to learn more about complacency and what these governments and these evil dictators throughout the world have been able to do and how they've been able to get people to agree to it and join the ranks, join their armies. I really believe if everybody read this book, it could much more effectively help us prevent something like the Holocaust from happening again. And there's a lot of other psychological takeaways from it that I can't fit into this video besides the whole torture element of it. Just really, really fascinating. I keep thinking about it every day, so I definitely recommend you check it out. Okay, so next up we have How to Lie with Statistics by Daryl Huff. I first learned about this book because it is Mr. Bill Gates' favorite. He reads it, I think every year. So naturally, Mr. Land Purchaser, if he loves this book, I wanted to see why does he love this book so much. So I decided to sit down and give it a good old read. I'm gonna put it up. Right. First off, this book is a really great introduction into general statistics. If you never took a stats course, I think just it's a good idea to know it, especially with how many stats we're hit with online when we read different articles today. The book, for example, goes over mean, median, and mode, and why companies will cherry pick which one they showcase as the average. And if you don't know the difference between those terms or how they're able to highlight a different portion of a segment of numbers, I really, really recommend reading this book. But it basically concludes by stating that 99% of the 
statistics you and I read every single day in the news, even in scientific studies and all of it, are pretty much not valid. It goes into all of the outside factors that could warp or manipulate a person's answer in a statistic study. For example, the wording in a question, like asking someone how much money they make versus saying to them, how do you feel about the money you make beforehand? Saying, do you feel embarrassed that you don't make a lot of money? And then asking them how much money they make. Asking a series of questions like that would completely warp the answers and the outcome, which is then put into the articles that we read every day. So the next time you read a statistic claiming that something is healthy or is a natural phenomenon happening in the world, definitely question it. And this book helps you question it and dive deeper into the study. So you're just better able to judge it in the future. Last up, we have Games People Play by Dr. Eric Byrne. So this book was the hardest one for me to get through simply because it is written in very, very scientific terms. It's very dense. So I am going to warn you on that. However, it is not that long. I'm really glad I read it because again, we do not receive basic psychological education in America at least. So it's a really good introduction into psychology and the basic three egos that every person has, child, parent, and adult. It then goes over really common scenarios that occur in everyday life between parents, kids, friends, lovers, all of that. And it explains how miscommunications arise based on which ego you are currently in in that conversation. Beyond explaining the basics, of course, this book will equip you with the ability to identify what ego the person across from you is in so you can shift what ego you are in to get the desired outcome. Dangerous stuff, of course, but if everyone else in the world is going to read this who has malintent, it's in your best interest to also read it so you can be aware if somebody is administering these tactics against you. I personally do not find these books to be evil. I think they're factual. I think they equip you with information that every person should be aware of, especially today with technology and social media and all of the information that is coming at us and we have no ability to judge it or filter it correctly. I think putting your blinders up to uncomfortable information makes you a more likely target of the manipulation in the first place. You can tell every single one of these authors, they're just scientists. They're just excited about the information they found and they want you to know more about it. So letting emotions get in the way of that and deciding not to read these books because you don't agree with the studies or something like that, I just think will put you at a disadvantage in the long term. Real quick, do not forget to like this video and subscribe if you have not done so already. We have so many more videos coming your way covering financial freedom, making money online, side hustles, and plenty more book reviews. If you guys like these types of book videos, if you like me reviewing books, please let me know below. If you want me to do videos where I break down and review just one single book over 10 minutes, I'm also happy to do that. So let me know your feedback below on that. And now to the library. That's funny, I just opened this book to politics in 1888, which seems kind of fitting for the books I just reviewed to you guys. The Cleveland leader must be getting ready for the campaign of 1888. We find upon its editorial page quite a pretentious poem entitled Alpha and Omega, and here is a sample stanza. Whose name will stand for coming time as hypocrites in prose and rhyme, and be despised in every clime, the mugwumps. Well, maybe so, but may we be permitted to add a stanza which seems to us to be very pertinent just now? And who next year, we'd like to know, will feed the Cleveland leader crow, just as they did three years ago, the mugwumps. I had to look up what a mugwump means. A person who remains aloof or independent, especially of party politics. If you're a mugwump, let me know below. Till next time, friends. <laughs>